Hello beautiful internet family, Denny from Danstube.tv and you can expect brutally honest tech reviews on the channel. And in today's episode of Danstube.tv, we have the one year later review of the Mavic 2 Pro. I will include a few links in the description below and also I'll have some interactive cards that will pop up on the screen throughout the video and these will link you back to some of my other Mavic 2 Pro videos. I've actually done quite a lot on the channel and this is just my one year later review of this unit here. So I also recently picked up the Mavic Mini and Honestly, it's just ridiculous to feel the build quality, to actually feel the difference between the two devices. Now, when I had the Mavic 2 Pro, I came from a Mavic Air, and prior to that, I had the original Mavic Pro. So that kind of build quality, that kind of, uh, kind of size and structure, I was very used to. And then when I got the Mavic Mini, it started tripping me out when I would unfold the Mavic 2 Pro because you can just feel how much has gone into this unit here. Now that's not discrediting the Mavic Mini, but it really does feel like a toy in comparison to this powerhouse here. It has a little bit more weight to it in the Mavic 2 Pro than the original Mavic Pro. It has a lot more sensors on board, plus it also has the massive one inch sensor right at the front there. So one of the biggest pieces of criticism that the Mavic 2 Pro has has received is the fact that this massive one inch sensor can only shoot 4k 30 frames per second they didn't offer 60 frames per second and it would have made a lot of sense if they had the Mavic 2 zoom that shot up to 30 frames and then the pro version which can shoot 60 frames per second because on paper this thing does not look much different from the original Mavic Pro it even has a very similar design but when you actually get to use this device here. When you actually see what a 20 megapixel sensor can actually produce and what 4K video looks like from a sensor of this size with adjustable aperture, you will definitely notice the difference. But on paper, you don't have 60 frames per second, so you can't even really play around with any sort of slow-mo in 4K. Now you do have the 1080p slow-mo options, and you have all of these other options. You have hyperlapse, you have all of these smart, intelligent flight modes, and there's so much crammed into this device. So if you're thinking about getting a drone for the first time, and you have enough money for a Mavic 2 Pro, then this really would be fantastic. But it's a lot of money to upgrade from a Mavic Pro to a Mavic 2 Pro, and I don't know whether it's worth it for a lot of people out there. Now, like I said before, I got the Mavic Mini, and I've been flying it now for a few months, and I've been very happy with it. It's a phenomenal little device. It can do such wonderful things in such a small body. Super stoked on it. But then the other day, I took the Mavic 2 Pro out, and you can definitely notice the difference. It was windy, and it handled it better than any drone I've ever flown. You know, it just does not struggle at all in high winds. The quality of the actual image, even in like relatively overcast days, it's fantastic. It just really does such a phenomenal job. Really reliable drone. That's one thing that I can definitely tick, big old tick, with the Mavic 2 Pro. It's reliable. It will do everything you want. It's powerful and it's portable as well. So you get that portable, powerful combination all in the one body. And honestly, it's a really good drone. You know, like at first I was a little bit hesitant to kind of get a new drone seeing as on paper it's not a major upgrade and even if you look at this compared to the Mavic Air again on paper it doesn't really look like a major upgrade but the major upgrade actually comes from the collaboration between Hasselblad and DJI and DJI actually purchased Hasselblad so this is an in-house production so it's getting to the point now where DJI are producing pretty much everything they're still outsourcing for parts here and there but for the most part everything is produced in-house and Hasselblad being one of their companies they decided to kind of implement their own unique camera system on a drone and this is the first Hasselblad on a drone from my understanding super remarkable stuff the color science from Hasselblad is phenomenal and the image just looks great I really do love what this camera can produce and the fact that you have a adjustable aperture from f 2.8 all the way up to f 11 
is just fantastic. The Mavic 2 Pro can also shoot 10-bit log and 10-bit HDR. So super powerful again, the camera is remarkable. So the only thing it's really lacking is this 60 frames per second, which a lot of people wanted. They really wanted 4K 60 frames per second. We saw the Mavic Pro, then we saw the Mavic Air, which on paper was very similar to the Mavic Pro, and then we expected quite a big leap to the Mavic 2 Pro. And like I mentioned before, we had a Mavic 2 Zoom and a Mavic 2 Pro. So you'd think the Pro version would have a few other standout features. Yes, it does have this big old Hasselblad camera on the front, but why did we not see 60 frames per second? It's hard to say, maybe they were worried it was gonna eat into the sales too much, but I couldn't imagine this thing sold as well as they were expecting it to. And I genuinely thought we'd see an update, a future update, where it was an option for us to shoot in 60 frames per second. A lot of people out there will, will wonder, well, is that even possible? Yes, it's definitely possible. It's happened many, many a times in the past. Companies will hold back on releasing the be-all, end-all of technology because they're worried that it will eat into sales and it will also maybe future-proof the product to the point that no one will want to buy their new iteration or their new version of a drone. So it's definitely possible. I definitely think that this drone can shoot 4K 60 frames per second. I just feel like they've held back on that. And I believe that's to ensure that people still want to buy the Phantom, you know, because the Phantom is still a leap over the Mavic 2 Pro, and then the Inspire is a leap over both of them. So it just feels like they're trying to keep the drones in their own separate categories so it doesn't eat into each of the sale pockets. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the build quality is phenomenal. I really love the folding mechanics on the Mavic design. They even did a really good job with the Mavic Mini. It still feels like a relatively high-end product when you're folding it. Yes, the body feels a little cheap, and at points you're kind of like, ooh, this thing's a little cheap and flimsy, but for the most part, the folding mechanism is actually solid. And you can see they've really refined that from this high-end folding mechanism here. This feels a lot better, though. You really can feel the quality as you're unfolding it and you know that it's not gonna have issues after an extended period of folding. So that's something I'm really stoked on. Love the design, not a major change from the original Mavic Pro, um, but still a notable, noticeable change with a slight color tweak and a few more sensors on board, a little bit more weight, and it just feels a little bit more polished overall. Another major update to the Mavic 2 line is the brand new controller. Well, the controller's not brand new, it looks very similar to the original, but, we can actually now finally do 1080p video transmission. So that means that you actually get really high quality video being transmitted to your mobile device that you have connected down here. And it makes a big difference. It means that you can really get the color as close as you want it to. You can get the framing as clean as you want it. And having a 1080p over a 720p, which was the original Mavic Pro playback, it makes such a big difference. And even with the Mavic Air, that had 720p as well. Please correct me if I'm wrong, I'm pretty sure this is all right. But it went from 720p to 1080p with the Mavic 2. And you can definitely notice a difference there. It makes it a lot easier to get those shots that you're looking for. So that's a big thing. Plus it also has an eight kilometer range now. So you definitely do get a little bit more range out of it. Again, you kind of want to be careful, keep it in line of sight. Don't fly radically, don't do stupid crap and ruin it for the rest of us. But you do have up to eight kilometers, so that just means that even if you are in a densely um, frequency loaded zone, like you're in a suburb, for example, and there's lots of frequencies getting sent around and for whatever reason it's interfering with your OcuSync 2, then you're gonna be okay because you've got that 8K range, you've got a little bit more range, and you can definitely still fly it comfortably and keep it in line of sight. So that's really important, and I love having that 1080p uh, video transmission directly to my phone now. It's actually made a big difference. Another big change which I've been happy about is the battery. They're a lot bigger, they're a little heavier, and you get 31 minutes, quotation marks, 31 minutes of flight time. You definitely don't get 31 minutes if you're flying smartly. I would say maybe about 27, 28 minutes, and that's really great. You know, that's all you kind of need. And from there, then I've got multiple batteries with the Fly More combo. So for me, it's been fine. If you just get the one battery, yeah, you're gonna get about 27, 28 minutes, but that's still really good. You know, I've been stoked with that. That's a fair bit of time to be up in the sky flying. The Mavic 2 Pro also offers hyperlapse options. 
a variety of smart flight modes, and it also has omnidirectional sensing, so you have sensors everywhere. You have them on the bottom, you have them on the back, on the front, on the sides, they're everywhere. It's omnidirectional, it's all around, so the drone is the safest it can possibly be, and it does a fantastic job of sensing everything around you. So. It's a really safe drone to fly. It's not hard to crash this thing. You just need to be really mindful of what's around you and smart when you're flying. But overall, they've made it idiot-proof. It's really easy not to crash this thing, which is fantastic. So when we really boil it down, what things do I hate about this drone? Mmm, the price? Not overly a big fan of the price. It was very expensive. And the fact that they didn't offer 4K60 uh, was a little bit unfortunate. A little bit of a bummer, for sure. But overall, I've been very happy with the drone. Early on, I was a little bit, maybe not sold fully on it, thinking, you know, oh, I'm super excited, love the Mavic Pro, love the Mavic Air, can't wait to get the Mavic 2 Pro. And then I was kind of committed to it, and I recognized it didn't have the 4K60, and I still went ahead and got it. And I haven't really had any buyer's kind of regret so far. I've been really, really impressed with the image. It does a phenomenal job, and it's still a, a big, a major leap from the Mavic Air and the original Mavic Pro in terms of the quality of video and photos that you can actually capture on this device. If you're looking for a new drone, and that's the kind of price range you're looking at, you want something that's portable. Maybe it's for travel. Maybe you still want something that has high quality then the Mavic 2 Pro is a must-have because there's nothing in that range uh, that you can even get close to the Mavic 2 Pro. Like, the Mavic Air's great, but this is still quite a leap over that. The Mavic Mini doesn't touch this thing. The Phantom's way too big to even think about transporting it anywhere. The Inspire, even bigger again. So, for what this drone is, it's, it's the perfect drone. You know, it's the perfect portable drone. And it can really do everything you want. You know, if you don't care that it doesn't have 60 frames per second 4K, then you're going to be really stoked on this. It can shoot 1080p 120 frames per second, so you have that. Plus you have a lot of options in 2.7K as well. Really versatile drone, super powerful, and it's been extremely reliable through the entire year that I've been using it. I've flown countless times with this drone. It has not let me down. It's been phenomenal. And I can't really think of anything to flaw about the Mavic 2 Pro. Love the design, love what they've done with it. They've kept it that core Mavic Pro feel, the, the core folding mechanics, the core, you know, even build quality, but they've just slightly improved on it. They've added new features, more sensors, a better battery life, and a really good one inch sensor. So I guess at this point, it's up to you guys. Do you need to upgrade your drone? Are you brand new into the market? If so, the Mavic Mini could be the move for you, and I have a lot of videos on the Mavic Mini, so you can check them out on the channel. Maybe the Mavic Air is the perfect choice for you, which again, I have a lot of videos on the channel. So let me know in the comments below what your needs are, why you're thinking about getting the drone, and together we can figure out what drone is perfect for you. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe and smash that notification bell if you're new here. You'll be updated on all of my new videos. Remember, Lots of Mavic Mini content on the channel, lots of Mavic 2 Pro content on the channel, lots of Mavic Air content. Yes, lots of drones, lots of cameras, lots of discussions about mental health and cameras and lots. So make sure to subscribe, smash that notification bell, have a fantastic day, and peace out.